the 2021 NFL Draft has came and gone. We here at SOS Discussions are discussing which team rolled the dice and got the steal of the NFL Draft. I'm going to start with you, Tony. Well, when it comes to stealing, I think the Dallas Cowboys were victims of that, you know, in the first and second round. And I'm going to talk about the second round with uh, safety Trayvon Morig out of TCU, who was drafted by the Raiders. Uh, obviously, he's taking John Gruden a, a, a good amount of time to try to get the Raiders straight. But uh, when it comes to a steal, I think he did what he had to do to jump up and get a guy which he really needed, considering they really needed help at that safety position. And when you look at a guy like, I had a guy like Morig, uh, and you watch his film, you watch his highlights, and whichever one you choose, he's all over the field. He's where the action is. Seven interceptions in his uh, total career. But the guy's got bad, he's got mad cover skills. And he's actually pretty good in the box. And I think uh, for a safety and in a, slew, in a slew of cornerbacks in this entire draft, and he can really be that diamond in the rough. That we Obviously, we know he's going to be good. But he's really that diamond in the rough where we can say, we can look back two or three years now and say, okay, the Raiders really got somebody here. John Gruden probably has a corner stall in the secondary, and I think they probably got the steal of the draft. Yeah, so I think, the to me, the steal of the draft, and it's hard to say uh, he was the steal necessarily because he was in the first round, but it was a player that I was screaming for on the spot on first draft show uh, that kind of slipped a little bit, and that's Jalen Phillips uh, going to Miami. I think when you look at him, right, uh, athletic athleticism is there. He ran a 4 5 40. Uh, he's the most polished pass rusher in the draft. I said that repeatedly, right? And when you look at his stats uh, last year, you know, I know that the big concern with him is the medical. We've always said the three most important positions in the football is the quarterback, the person that protects the quarterback, and the person that goes and gets the quarterback, right? And so when you look at Jalen Phillips, a top edge rusher is going to be a top 10 pick every year. But the medicals were concerning with him. Obviously, he had to medically retire earlier at UCLA before transferring to Miami. And he's had a concussion issue. But like I said, when you look at him on the field last year, 15 and a half tackles for loss, eight sacks in 10 games. You know who had that same stat line there last year of college? Miles Garrett, the number one pick in the 2017 NFL draft. I think when you look at the Miami Dolphins, they got Jalen Phillips, the best pure pass rusher in the draft at number 18. They're adding him to a defense that was fifth in the league last year. Brian Flores, he was the architect of that Patriots defense for so long. And he brought a lot of those same principles, tough, you know, corners on the back end playing man coverage and allowing you know scheme and pressure up front I think Jalen Phillips has all the tools athletically and on the field as far as pass rush moves to be a perennial pro, pro bowler he's going to the right situation we talked about the quarterback that went to the 49ers would be in the best situation I think this is the best situation for an edge rush right a defense that's already great that really doesn't need you and everything you do for them is a plus I see a perennial pro bowler in Jalen Phillips and I think Miami got a steal I think one of the biggest deals in the draft is not a sexy, but the Los Angeles Chargers got Rashawn Slater. Rashawn Slater was projected from anywhere from five to 13. I thought he was going to go top 10. I even thought the Cowboys were going to take him at 10 once the cornerbacks were off the board just to build that next offensive line. But him sliding all the way to 13, be it that some people had him ranked over Panay Sewell this draft class, and you have a great quarterback coming up in your organization. I think Rashawn Slater is a perfect pick for them at 13. It gives them somebody that can move anywhere on the offensive line. The guy has shown versatility throughout his college days. I think he's a perfect fit for the Los Angeles Chargers and got him at a great value at number 13. Yeah, while we're talking about still of the draft, I want to talk about Tony, who's still in the show with this great polo that's extremely exclusive. Didn't even know it existed until five minutes before we got on camera. <laughs> but, you know, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? We loving it. We loving it. Okay. I got to get me one. I'm going to put you on blast on camera now. Uh -oh. When we talk about still of the draft, for me, it's my guy, JOK, out of Notre Dame, Jeremiah Owusu Koromoa. I understand that he had a heart issue that was. A, a bit of a red flag, but they had some media, excuse me, uh, they had some medicals to check out. And if, as long as he can stay right with that, assuming that he stays right with that, I think the Cleveland Browns got themselves a steal in the second round at 52. You know, Jamar was with me when we were doing the show. I said, I wanted Greg Newsom, I wanted Jeremiah Wusu Cormo. Uh, the Saints passed on JOK and the Browns got both of them. So I love this guy because we're looking at an off-ball linebacker who has experience playing in the slot. He's explosive. He, he doesn't play like he's 218 or in the 210s. But at the same time, in the, in the NFL that we live in now, we're looking at Darius Leonard, who is one of the best linebackers in the league, and he's saying he wants to get lighter. He was talking about getting lighter and getting lighter, and he never wants to go over 225. There was a point when he was 219, and he said he wants to be the lightest linebacker in the NFL. And that's because he still has the ability to run sideline to sideline, 
He still has the ability to be explosive. And we're talking about Jeremiah Usu Koromoa. He's going to also play in the run support, and he's not going to be afraid to, to get in there. He's not going to play like he's in the two tens because he's physical. And I'm looking at a guy who can handle the biggest mismatch on the, on the field, which is the tight end, because he can run with them. He's big enough. He can cover them. I think that this guy is an absolute steal for the Cleveland Browns, a team that is ready to take that next step to being a Super Bowl contender in the AFC. All right, lots of, lots of good picks there, you guys. Let us know what you all think in the comments below. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Share this with somebody you know. We're SOS Discussions.